One of the other options that Pictures to Exe gives us is the ability to give the viewer of our slideshow control of the slideshow. Now I'm sure we could come up with lots of different scenarios where this technique could be useful. But as you can see here, I'm going to use a wedding, which is probably one of the better examples, I think. What I have in the slide list here is just a few wedding pictures for demo purposes. But of course, if we were going to do this for real, we could have two, three, four hundred images from which the client can actually watch a slideshow, move through that slideshow at the speed they want to go, and they can also record the images they want printed or placed into a wedding album. Now the main difference between a slideshow like this and the creator controlled one is this one needs music. What we want to do here is to create a nice environment for a family to sit down and look at all the potential images they can choose from while gentle music is playing in the background and relative music of course if we're going to show pictures of a wedding we'd probably choose some wedding style music. Now when we put together a user controlled presentation like this we need to bear in mind that the persons viewing this may not be as computer literate as we are. So we either need to include guidance in the opening page when the slideshow first starts or we at least use the navigation bar to help people to navigate through the slideshow and also to escape from it when they want to. So on my opening blank screen here, if I wanted to have no navigation bar at the bottom of the screen at all, then I would need to take that blank into my objects and animation screen and I would need to create some text which is going to give the user some guidance. And we need to keep that fairly brief but to the point. So the guidance on that first slide could simply say something like to move through the slideshow use the arrows on the keyboard forward and backwards and to leave the slideshow use the escape key. That's probably all they're going to need. The advantage of using the navigation bar which is built into Pictures to Exe is that I think most viewers will recognize the controls and not require any guidance but of course that's going to be on screen most of the time. Now one of the options that go hand in glove with this type of presentation now is the slide styles that we can create and use in Pictures to Exe. Now it's not my intention to deal with them in this particular demonstration but I don't think I can create a presentation on wedding pictures without at least mentioning the fact that we can apply a number of different slide styles to many or all of the images within seconds and of course once we've got a template made then of course something like this can be very quick and easy to produce. So if we're going to give control of our presentation to the viewer we have no idea how long they're going to take to go through the images we've presented to them therefore we have no idea how much music we're going to need. Now I think we've got two ways to address that. One of those is to put a piece of music in which is in keeping with the images and loop it so that it automatically replays or we can put a number of different tracks of music into Pictures to Exe which will play one after the other. In a presentation such as this we're also going to need some way for the viewer to record which images they want to select. So we need to have the file name or some number on screen at all times. So let's make a start and set up the parameters for the slideshow and what I've just done is to locate three pieces of simple music just for this demonstration. It's just straight piano music but something which is very melodic and very pleasant to listen to as background music. What I need to do next is to go to my project options. I've already set up the aspect ratio of 16.9 from the main tab. 
So let's move to the audio section and select those tracks of music. I'm going to click to add an audio file and Pictures to Exe has automatically gone to where the images are stored but it's just showing me the music. And there we can see the three tracks. Now I can select all three of those together simply by holding the control key and clicking each one but sometimes just as quick is a click and drag and when I click open they all open up within one track. What it means when we have a number of pieces of music within one track is that each of these will be played one after the other. So if I wanted River of Love to start then all I need to do is to click and drag that up the stack and now they'll play in that order. If we wanted to add any other audio that we wanted to play simultaneously with the music which we wouldn't want to do here I'm going to suggest but if we did then what we would do would be to add a track and we would add audio files to this track and I suppose the best example I can come up with is commentary and or sound effects and in that case they will play simultaneously with the music but I'll just remove that track and we can move on to the control options so we're going to need to wait for a key press so let's tick that box we certainly want to permit the control of the show using the keyboard the exit on mouse move is generally for screen savers. So what I'm going to do here is go to my left mouse and say I want that to give me the previous slide, the right mouse the next slide. The mouse cursor, no, I'm not going to auto hide it. In fact, I think in this instance, I'm going to show it all times. But it's going to be rather personal to you. You may decide to have something slightly different. But I'm thinking of the viewer who may not be au fait with the workings of computers and we'll leave the mouse on screen to make it easy for them. We certainly want to show the navigation bar and it's ticked by default. In the customize option I'm going to tick all of those options but I don't need to change anything else I just need to click OK unless I want this to be on screen all of the time. Again, a personal choice I think, but for this demo I'll just untick that so the bar is on screen. I don't think it's going to detract too much from people selecting their images. Click OK to that. Now there's nothing we need in the screen options here and in the transitions there's nothing we need here either, but just a reminder of course that all of the normal skills we apply to audiovisual we can apply to a presentation like this so we've got the choice of any type of transition and transition length but let's move on to the default section because we do need something from here this is where we need to think about how the viewer of the slideshow is going to select the images they require so I'm going to go to insert a template and I have a number of options here. I think I'll leave you to read down these at your leisure but I think we need the simplest one and the one right at the top which is the picture name. I'm going to go to customize font here because in this option we get to choose a location for where we want that to appear. Remember we may have the bar down the bottom, the navigation bar. So we can place this at the left, top, right bottom, right top, left top, center. I think I'm just going to put it exactly where it comes up by default. We can add drop shadows, we can change the font, size, all those things, but I think on this occasion if we just click to apply that to all slides and I think we need to do that here so I'm going to click it just to be on the safe side and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to take a brief look and already look I can see exactly what I want on that slide and if I hit my little arrow key to the right and jump to the next slide I think I'm pretty satisfied that we've got the settings right there. Now there's one more change we need to make in the project options so I need to drop back in there for a moment and I need to go to my advanced tab because I need to untick the box that says synchronize soundtrack and slides. 
This is the option that we use 99% of the time when we make a slideshow. But what it does here is it separates the music and the slides. So both of them are going to play independently. That allows the viewer to stop the slideshow and the music will play gently in the background. For the moment then, we're done. Let's click OK. Make sure you save a project file with all of the changes you've made. I've already got one started, so I'll just go and save over the top of that. So I know all the work I've done so far is safely stored. Now that's all we need to do to get the slideshow functioning. So on this particular occasion, I'm going to do a full screen preview while recording this. It doesn't record the transitions very nicely, but you must make some allowance for that. It'll be much better in your slideshow. And of course the music is going to play, so I can't do any talking. So all I'm going to do is to open up this to the first slide. It still has the words text on there, and I'll just hit the right arrow key and jump through a few of the slides pretty quickly. And you can just see how it's not affected by the music playing. So here we go. Now the viewer has two options. If they are computer savvy, they could use the cursor control keys as I did, but you've also got the navigation bar there all of the time, and I think most people would understand what those symbols mean, and there shouldn't be any difficulty navigating through the slideshow, and of course we've got the title of the image or the number of the image for the viewer to record. Now there are one or two other options you may want to consider with a presentation like this. Let's move into the timeline for a moment. Now this is looking rather odd because we've got three tracks of music and just a few images because we're working with a demo. But in normal circumstances we could have hundreds of images and it's almost certain that the images will outlast the music. But if I scroll to the right here we can see where one piece of music ends and another one starts. So if I put my cursor towards the end there, I'm just going to press play for a moment because quite often you can have pieces of music with quite a lot of silence at the end and maybe even at the start. So let's listen. Well the piano is just fading out, I almost missed it, but you can see there's a lot of silence there. So what I'm going to do, let's stop that. I can click this file and I can drag it to the left. And what it's doing is blending the two. Now we need to put the cursor back and listen, but what it will automatically do is crossfade those two pieces of music. We don't want to apply music that's going to be unattractive, so we do need to test it as I'm going to do now. Now that sounded pretty good, so we would need to move on to the third piece of music and make a decision if we've got the same sort of thing there, and it looks like we have. So click, drag that back, overlap the two, just place your cursor and have a quick listen to make sure it doesn't sound unattractive. And I think that sounds okay. We could possibly move it a little bit more to the left, but I think that's more personal choice. There's one other thing I think we may want to consider as well, and that's the volume of the music. Are we going to leave it to the viewer to turn the volume of their computer down? Or do we want to temper the volume of the music in the slideshow from the start? Again, a personal choice, but if you wanted to temper the volume, we're working here in Pictures to Exit 8 Deluxe. 
to bring up the editor I need to click this little WAV file here and now you can see we get that orange line which signifies a hundred percent volume if I click there you can see it so what I could do is drag the volume of my music down if it was necessary to do that not forgetting of course to get all three tracks at the same level but that's another option that you have one final option is back in the project options and in the music tab and we need to select track one because depending on the number of images we have in our presentation and how long the viewer is going to take to go through them perhaps nine or ten minutes may not be enough so with track one selected we can still tick the box to loop the soundtrack and there we have our user controlled show created all we need to do is to make sure we save our project file and we create our executable file for PC or Mac now perhaps one thing I have neglected to say and it's due to the fact that I rarely use the navigation bar that I had forgotten that it actually has a volume control now you're not hearing music here because I have temporarily muted it so I can speak but there we can see how the navigation bar is going to look how the viewer can use the options here or the arrows on the keyboard but they do have the option to just mute the sound completely or they can just fade it down from here so whether you choose to do that for them or allow them to do it themselves a personal choice and there's the little cross at the top right to escape the slideshow and finally I'm going to produce a short demo here I'll just use one track of music for the demo but one final thing to say once we come to the end what happens does the slideshow exit or do we go back to the start again a personal choice go to your project options if you want to affect this and here close the show after the last slide in the main tab but you can choose to repeat the show until escape is pressed let's select that option and I'll make my demo in that way